Hier ist Felix Tönnissen. Applaus. Felix Tönnissen. Viel Spaß. Wow. Was für eine Location. What a location. That's crazy. I'm really happy about every individual participant and I hope that you will be able to listen to an exciting presentation. And this presentation, this talk will certainly be a bit different from what you've seen and heard today already. Let me start with the next sample I brought along. And this example has to do with an app. A well, well known app, one of the best known ones probably we have on the market. I've got a question I would like to ask around. Who's registered with Tinder? Raise your hands. Who's registered with Tinder? Very good. So some people raise their hands as well. I'm really enthusiastic. So let me start with that high quality PowerPoint took a bit longer, but I think it is really attractive. Tinder is one of the most successful apps we have seen in Germany and worldwide in recent years. And what's so interesting about Tinder, I just saw there were three people who uh, maintained that they registered with Tinder. So I'd like to tell the other ones sitting here who haven't raised their arms what Tinder is about. What's interesting about Tinder, I can actually use in a rather detailed way the platform in order to get to know the partner for life. You raised your arm, you know about it, so if you are searching for your next wife, Tinder is a good approach. Relatively simple, just to give you an explanation. You've got that app, you use your smartphone, you get a, a photo of a young lady like that Lady Ellison visualized. And then you're able to decide, do you think this lady is attractive or not? And then you swipe the lady to the left or to the right. So all simple. You'd manage, wouldn't you? Well, this app, Tinder, is so successful because I can simply select and say, this lady, I like her, or I don't like this one, and that's the end of the story. Just imagine the following situation. Let's take in a professional approach. A friend of mine told me the following story. One evening he's sitting on his sofa using that app. He's swiping to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. At some point in time, since we're all professional, you are integrated in the workflow. You're using the app, you're swiping, swiping, swiping. And then next thing happens is you get this young lady, Alison, on the screen. And you swipe her to the left. She's gone. And I had somebody in Cologne who was calling upon me and said, well, there are enough others coming after, aren't they? Yes, but this young lady is gone and she'll not be back. So what's happened? Tinder support received a lot of messages. We talked about support tickets. So they received a lot of messages, mainly from men who said the following. Well, listen, I used my smartphone. I've got the following difficulty. I took a wrong decision. Can you please reset my account to the lady I chose uh, previously because I would like to think about my decision. It happened so often that at some point in time Tinder said, can we not develop a business model out of this? Can we not use the customer feedback in order to further develop our product so that we can make some more gadgets and features out of it? And then they introduced the yellow return button. So recovery button. Just imagine the following situation. You get to know a person, at some stage you're married, and then all of a sudden a little boy comes to see you. He's your son. And asks you, Dad, how did you get to know Mum? And Dad says, oh, I pushed the recovery button on Tinder. I think that is a statement. Romantic, isn't it? But what's happening when you press the recovery button because you don't know this button because you're not registered with Tinder. So if you press the recovery button, what's happening? There's a little window popping up and this window says, you want to recover, Alison? Then get Tinder Premium for 19 euros 95 per month and you can recover all the other Alisons as well. So what's smart is to go there and think and be courageous to launch a business model for which there was no monetization in the beginning because people wouldn't have known how to make money with it. But it's there to differentiate yourself from the competitors and to generate 
a well-proven benefit because each and everybody here who has already been registered with some kind of flirting community will know that as of a certain point in time it will cost a lot of money. Love is always expensive, but here I can be on board for 19 euros 95. However, I have to ask the question, was this lady the love of my life, 19 euros 95 for the rest of my life? Tough statement, but a nice example how you can generate a business model. Just a few words, Tobias said, the man with the hairdo, for 12 years, I've been an advisor for business setups. It's now called startup coaching. I coached the participants in the Lions Den for four years and I'm also involved in startups myself. Sometimes successful, sometimes I'm not so successful. Last year with one of my startups, I had my first uh, insolvency. I had to uh, uh, register. Superb business concept, but still I had to declare insolvency because the manager disappeared. Have you had this experience? The manager, the managing director of the company disappeared and you're the shareholder. If that is happening, you have to fill in the creditors list. Really fun. If you've got an event agency, for example, you're organizing an event, you're selling 10,000 tickets and then everything went, goes bust. You have to set up a creditors list with 10,000 people. If unfortunately the managing director has disappeared, you as an investor have to fulfill that job. Really exciting story. So if you want to have more experience, come and see me later on. But what is important to me is no matter whether they are startups, new marketing methods, new ideas or what have you, I always have to be willing to tread on new path and go for new things and try out what can work and what can't. What I find quite useful is to occasionally think about the question as to what happened in the past few years. Because we're all ever so intelligent and for us it's always easy to say, well, it was so obvious that the development would turn out like that. But nevertheless, none of us knows what's going to happen in the future. I cleaned up my basement rooms in the recent days and found two things. The very first product I found in my basement room is that mobile phone. Can you remember? Who of you has got a Nokia that you're still using? Oh, too many IT people in the room. But what was wonderful with that mobile phone was that. Have you ever thought about the display breaking? That display of my Nokia never broke. Were there Nokia repair stores that were specializing in repairing the display within two hours for $185 or euros? No. Well, you probably clumped it together with one hand pressure. That was it. When I found it in the basement, I switched it on. There was uh, still a uh, battery available with my iPhone. I wouldn't dream of it. But Snake was ever the, so wonderful. Everybody is telling me that kids are still sitting in front of their smartphone. I don't know how many hours I spent with Snake until the uh, whole thing was filled up to the fringe. Now, what's so interesting with Nokia is a different figure namely 1999. That was about 20 years, even not 20 years ago, that this mobile phone had been launched in the market. That was the date of the launch in the market. It's even not 20 years ago. Different question. The most successful app with the World Championship 2006? None, because there hadn't been any apps yet. And today, we keep saying it's obvious it had to happen. I knew it. But nevertheless, we're having difficulties thinking about what's going to happen in the years ahead. At some point in time, we'll be able to print organs. We can already print houses. You will probably go into a store in the future saying, I've been drinking too much alcohol. Can you print a new liver? And then you'll have a liver transplant. Nowadays, everybody says that won't happen. Of course it will happen. But I need to be courageous enough to think about it, to be a visionary. Uh, person. A simple example relates to this product. Can you remember when the Apple headsets were launched in the market? I know. I kept thinking, wide headsets, how does that work? Everybody had black ones. 
How all of a sudden can you come up with white ones? How did they get the color, the paint on it? That a very simple product variant variation led to the situation where everybody knew these are Apple headsets because they're white and everybody all of a sudden wanted to have white headsets and all of a sudden all the other ones came up with white headsets as well. So it is a relatively simple story. But if I want to tread on this path, it is very important to keep an eye on my customers. I need to know what the customer's needs are and what is important to the customer. We've got a relatively high share of men here in the room today, so please all men, try to put yourself into women's shoes for a moment. In my life, I have heard two sentences relatively often. For the ladies sitting here, well, there will be examples for men as well. So first sentence, I've got that hay-like hair. Second sentence, I've got a runner in my thighs. My former boss, when I had an employment, I was invited. I had the kind of castle or manor house, and when you were invited, it was really an honor. I was a single at the time, and I don't, didn't want to go to my boss on my own. I asked my sister whether she wanted to come with me, and you would not find it cool, but I was in my mid-twenties, and I said, I don't want to go there on, myself, on my own. I was on my way to the car when my sister all of a sudden said, oh, God, and I said, what's happened? I, and she said, I've got a runner on my tights. And I said, so what's wrong with it? Well, just go upstairs and change your tights. And my sister said, it's not possible. And I said, why is it not possible? And she said, I haven't got the same tights uh, anymore. And I said, well, wear a different one. No, no other one would match with my dress. And I said, oh, how many differences are there so that it is not possible? So I'm a problem solver and I said, okay, why don't you remove your tights? And she said, it's not possible. And she said, no, it's not possible because it's too cold. But I said, it's uh, so thin, this thing, it doesn't keep you warm. And she said, no, it's possible because I did not shave my legs. So that was the moment where I thought, why don't you shave your legs? She's going to accompany to my bosses and on the other hand you think she's my sister I don't want to know whether she shaves her legs so there is a real explosion going on in your brains end of story we went to a drugstore near the railway station and bought a similar tides uh, in the meantime I've know my way around I know the den numbers etc I know what a ladder is etc now the lion's den start up different story that we bring a launch a, a tights in the market that are unbreakable. They actually demonstrated it. They uh, took a steel brush, it's like a toothbrush, just a bit harder, and they wrapped over the um, tights for I don't know how many minutes. They didn't say we use that wonderful material for the tights and you can buy them for three euros 95. No, they said our tights are solving one of the major problems of a target groups. There won't be any runners. It's unbreakable. So you have to know at the first plate and ask why didn't the others communicate it earlier? Because that seems to be the biggest problem for women. So topic or buzzword market analysis. Startup coach is what I called myself. You think, cool, coaching startups. But let me think back where I started off, and that was one industry, hairdressers. I've seen so many hairdressers places, 20, 30, in the first part of my professional life, so I know everything about the composition of shampoos, etc. Most interesting thing, however, is to think about the question as to how, what do I call a hairdresser's place? I brought along the most interesting names I got to know. Just imagine, you go to the hairdressers. Habra Kadabra is one of the names. Oh, I came to her ranch, but said, where do you go? What's your hairdresser for hair? Nah, hair. You've got a wonderful hair door. Yes, I go to Pony and Clyde. Hanashi is another wonderful name. It's crazy, isn't it? 
I love startups. I love creativity. But creativity also has to kind of match the reality of customers. And this is very important in this context. So a lot of good ideas in there. So for example, if you're planning for a wonderful shop for uh, shampoo products or similar things, you can certainly get a few nice ideas and get inspired from this list. So if I want to tread on this path, I often realize that the marketing for my products plays an important role. And here too, most of the experience I have done is with my sister. We are almost of the same age. She's not my twin sister, so we are not really of the same age, but of similar age. And I have very good experience with my sister. You remember the story of tights and the letter. There was another case. I went to a drugstore with my sister, and my sister told me, I need makeup. doesn't take long. Right. I said, okay, no problem. I'll wait for you. 15 minutes. As a man, what do you know about makeup? You press the tube and then some brownish paste will come out of the tube and that was all I knew about. But what I learned is makeup covers up colors and nourishes your skin. Then, very traditionally, I went to the drugstore, went through the drugstore and found a different product. And I found a tinted daycare cream. I opened it up, pressed on the tube, and then there was this brownish little worm coming out. And I went to my sister and said, Teresa, I found makeup. It's a different one. She said, Felix, that's tinted daycare. But I said, that's the brownish uh, paste. She said, no. That's different. That's where the nourishing part is much higher than the covering part. It was like talking to a lawyer. And I said, okay, I went further through the shop and I found another product. And I'm turning to the ladies in the room now. I found a different product, which is that BB cream. Who of the ladies present here in the room knows what BB stands for? And of the men? Huh, even fewer. That's cool. BB cream, men's blemish balm, three functions, colors, uh, covers, and nourishes. And if you press on that tube, you'll have that brownish worm coming out. BB, very important. If you take one thing home from my talk is that BB cream is something totally different than tinted daycare cream. It's totally different. So it decides for the women who gets the men they after. No, the main word is a bit more easy, less complex. If you said you launched the BB cream, what's the successor of BB cream? CC cream. Because we don't make, we don't want to make customers' life difficult. The customer has to understand. So there's a BB cream, and as a next one, there will be the CC, CC cream. Of course, the customer has to understand what the successor product is. BB, CC. That's new. I'll buy it. Sometimes the world is simple, isn't it? It's not a joke. Two weeks ago, I went to a drugstore and I found a new product. What's the name? DD cream. Crazy, isn't it? Well, that's simple. BB, CC, DD. I'm asking myself, why didn't they start off with RR cream? That's funny, isn't it? Weird. Anyway, it's a very interesting story. And one again, once again, it shows it's the same product, a different envelope, and being courageous to go for it seems to work. So sometimes I go for a coffee in Düsseldorf. There's this American coffee shop chain. You know it, where everybody's lining up. Because afterwards, you'll get that mug where somebody has written his name on and spelt it in the wrong way. That's super. Next to it, there's an old coffee, coffee roasting business. No, we all go to this American coffee shop chain. But what was his clever idea? He said, what are we going to do? We're making coffee. We're offering coffee. But we've got three sizes, like everyone, tall, grande, and venti. We don't have small, medium, and large. No, we have got tall, taller, tallest. So if you drink the venti one, I think it's 20, two, two liters, two and a half liters. If you have that, you'd be really high on the after show party tonight. But what's interesting, if you want, if you ask for a normal coffee, small or medium sized, 
Then please go to the ordinary coffee shop. We're only starting at all. The packaging size is something that can be changed. You don't need to adjust to the market. You can think how you do things differently. So from coffee, a good transition to our next topic. So when you've drunk this coffee, um, let's imagine you are, have all registered with Tinder. You've all m met someone at Tinder. And what do Germans do? Well, they go for a coffee together. Do you want to go for a coffee with me? Oh, yes, of course. So there was a first, second, a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth date. And with the ninth or tenth date, we're relatively conservative here. It was the case that the woman accompanied you home, um, stayed with you overnight. So she, we're very conservative. So she sleeps in, she sleeps in your bedroom, and we sleep in the living room. Uh, we're very well um, educated. So when you wake up in the morning, you on the sofa, she in your bed, and you might ask yourself breakfast, breakfast time. You live in a household like mine. You might have one problem. I don't have sausage, I don't have cheese, I don't have any rolls to bake up, I don't have eggs, I don't have tomatoes. There is Nutella and open marmalade where you don't know how long uh, it's still to be used. But I always have oats. When I went to see my grandmother and um, mowed the lawn, then she always prepared lunch for me. And lunch was always this, boiled oat and milk gruel. That sounds very attractive, doesn't it? Gruel. So just imagine I wake up Alison in the morning and um, I touch her lightly on the head and say, good morning, hey, did you sleep well? And she opens her eyes and says, yes, I slept well. Oh, it was very nice in your bed. And um, do, would you like to have breakfast? Yeah, some breakfast, some low-carb breakfast. I'd enjoy that. And I say, well, would you like some gruel for breakfast? Very rich boiled oat and milk and put it on a table. Look at that. Looks tasty. I think that thing would be done. I think nothing would happen. So, that's no gruel. That is awesome fancy porridge. That is completely different. Oats. Oats. 100 grams. You have 100 grams are 69 cents. But porridge, 100 grams, costs 6.99. Just 10 times pricier because porridge is brought from Scotland in wheelbarrows by foot through England over the North Sea to Germany you probably add some chia seeds some goji beers and then then you have a really fancy breakfast super cool name and you can sell it for 13 euros onward and we do buy it because it's very healthy so if you don't start eating chia seeds today you'll die that's the truth. Without chia seeds, your <laughs> life's over. I love this example because it demonstrates very clearly how you can take new paths. We have an existing product and just rename it. I can do the same for me. How do I call myself? A consultant, a coach, a startup coach, a marketing expert. It just have to fit in with me. And sometimes wording makes the real difference. So let's continue with our story. Alison slept uh, in my bed. Uh, she stayed with me. So we move in after a few breakfasts, a few night overs. And then one day we'll have to buy a new mattress. Have you ever gone to a professional mattress shop? Those who don't show up? What's happening with them? Are you sleeping on pallets? In cars? What are you sleeping on? Straw? Well, anyway, this is the mattress, professional mattress. I went to such a professional, uh, like an expert shop for mattresses, and I learned a lot about marketing. Very simple. There was a young, very pretty uh, saleswoman. She approached me, and I realized she'd learned something. Hello, you're looking for a mattress? I just wanted to make a joke, but I didn't. And then I said, yes, well, I'm looking for a mattress. Let me ask you three questions. That's how she did it. Three questions. Oh, okay, which question? So first, 
please join. Please join in. You've been very active. <laughs> join in a little more. So, question one. Do you sleep on your back, on your stomach, or at your side? Well, when I fall asleep in the evening, I usually lie on my back. When I move around at night, I usually wake up on the side, and then in the morning, I sometimes wake up on my belly. And I realized that that wasn't the right question, the right answer. And then she turned to question number two. Your current mattress, is it? Um, what kind of mattress is it? Is it um, a latex mattress? Or what kind of mattress is it? Well, I bought it at IKEA. Well, there are different mattresses too. So again, that was the wrong answer. And question number three. How many... Um, how many blocks does your um, strip straps have? Have you found the base uh, below your mattress? Well, I didn't have an answer. I can only tell you it's made from wood. I didn't know more about the base, the base frame. And then we'll make a test. Have you ever gone to such a shop? This. Um, test is great. You lie down on a mattress, you have to put your feet on one of these um, plastic films to make sure you don't um, make this mattress um, dirty. But if you're someone like me, you don't want to lie on one of these mattresses. You feel more like you don't want to move, you don't want to touch this mattress. So at the end, I bought a mattress. No, I didn't buy one. Because I felt there were so many um, things in this process that I didn't enjoy the process and I thought there wasn't the mattress that I was looking for. So what happened? A startup from the US uh, in Germany, some people said we're producing mattresses. How many? One. So this American business produced one business. They don't have the 600 uh, configuration tool. One fits all. Well, that won't work with me because my wife and I, we have different, we weigh differently and different uh, requirements. But for me, that was the first perfect product because I knew I didn't have to take a decision on which was the perfect mattress. There is only one mattress and that fits me too. So the custom individuality is sometimes too much choice. Go to a car shop, for example, buy a car. I tried to buy, or oh, I bought a car for my staff, uh, couple of uh, weeks ago and it was much too difficult I, I was almost uh, sending my stuff because I didn't know which to choose from three different types uh, 10,000 opportunities to um, customize it but what they did from the mattresses shop was something very clever they are very online uh, oriented people here so you have a 60 day return policy so you get your money back when you're not happy those who've ordered mattresses, two to two meters, um, you get it delivered, um, wrapped in film, don't open it. Um, a sticker says don't open it with the knife or a scissors. You might open it with your f teeth and then something happens. The thing, get the mattress and unfold itself and is really big. So how do I send it back? Uh, do I take the film from the kitchen film and you call up the logistics service and say uh, pick up the mattress or and pick it up I call them and say pick it up quickly otherwise it'll go to uh, it will be picked up as rubbish so too much choice is not good for the consumer either a very good example that we had for at the Dragon's Den too I hope everyone's above 18. So they were producing condoms. If you're a startup, people might always tell you, well, condoms have been invented already. Everything that's been existent, online shops, we don't need it anymore. But what did they do? They thought about it for a long time, how they wanted to name their company and decided on the name of Unicorn. Unicorn. No idea how they found out this name, but they decided on Unicorn. And you might remember um, that it sometimes says on food packages may contain traces of nuts. It hasn't got to do anything with this product because they put on may contain traces of pixie dust. 
and on the back you can see different stories. They've really understood the problem of condoms in the 21st century is the purchase process because people don't want to buy condoms. They rather feel embarrassed by buying it. Oh, look at him, he's got sex. Ooh, we can't talk about it. But when you go to a drugstore and buy condoms, you might buy 10 other things and put them on top of the condoms. Because uh, the, uh, at the cashier, they won't look down to the condom package. So, might contain traces of pixie dust. This is how you can turn around the market, revolutionize the market just by changing the packaging, changing the park marketing and changing the, the idea how you wrap it up your product. So, just like the one or the other of you, we had a Christmas party in December as well. I have to say this um, a rather low voice as a boss. Christmas parties are not that great as a boss. But as an employee, I can do whatever I like at Christmas parties. I can eat and consume whatever I like. But as a boss, it's differently. My assistant had a great idea. We'll go to an Afghan restaurant. I said, OK, we can do that. So we eat a lot, ate a lot at the party. And I realized, oh, that will be a very expensive evening anyway. So we were done with that part. And then in the past, uh, they usually women ordered uh, beer and uh, men ordered beer and women ordered um, wine. And today, what do people drink? Gin tonic. That's what you drink today. So two euros in the past, uh, three, four euros for wine in the past. Now gin tonic with something, Bombay t takeaway, for 10 euros. So the two programmers, oh, for me, more, more gin tonic. And I thought like, oh, is that okay? Uh, should I tell my staff, is it okay to say oh, that's it? Well, anyway, they now have to work extra hours. So afterwards, I thought to myself, now the evening was op over, but the best um, uh, merchandiser ever came to me, um, approached me, and it was um, the waitress. And she said, um, here's the bill. But he said, oh, wait just a second. And I like it when people speak slow to me. If, you're, if you yourself are someone who's quick, you like talking fast, it's good to have someone who talks in a low voice, like slowly. And he said, I've got a very special surprise for you. Can you see over there? This is my wife in the kitchen. OK, let's see what the story goes on, I thought to myself. So the wife was uh, winking over. She was um, saying hello. And my wife went to the marketplace today and bought some fresh n hazelnuts. She then went to a special store to buy fresh couverture, some fresh chocolate, and then she stood five hours in the kitchen to build a very delicious Afghan chocolate cake. The wife uh, saying hello, waving, and the man said, who would like to um, make a pleasure and, uh, well, um, um, it, who would like to have a piece of this cake that my wife prepared? And all raising their hand, obviously. So if you, just I, come up, um, come into town from rural areas, you'll be surprised by the price. Eight euro fifties for that piece of cake. And that was great fun. But I thought to myself, well, you won't get me. I'm a merchandiser as well. I know how this game works. So he said, uh, he said a sentence that really killed me. Well, if you don't eat that cake, you've never really been to an Afghan restaurant. You've re never really eaten Afghan food. And I've got this tick off list and I've got a tick off box that says, no, I cannot tick this box because I haven't eaten the cake. So that was perfect, a very good example. Every merchandiser, that every, everyone would have known that nothing was to be sold, but you just had to write the, have the right strategy to sell something on. Another online example. I often have to buy, um, check in in hotels, often have to book hotel rooms. And that's an example from one of the pages where I um, book uh, hotel rooms. There are other pages too, great hotels great pages but I use this page a lot so what happens first you can see here these are the last available rooms 
Over 2,600 people are saying this is a great hotel. So there's nothing wrong to be done. But this is not enough. There is also a discount. Well, what a surprise. Only a few rooms left. Everybody says it's great and there is a discount. That makes me think I want to, do, want to go there too. Not sure if I've mentioned. It was very, very popular with others. And I realized there was a discount, but only for those who didn't understand it. That's a real bargain. And what I really enjoy, what, I always, what always gets me, eight other people are looking at this hotel right now too. And they understand, and I understand that they want to get the last few rooms. I, my solution, I always book these rooms. I sometimes think like I book these eight rooms left and then one day before the end I just uh, get g give back the last seven rooms. It just this page makes me act that way. And I realize even though there's a discount I want to repeat it. It's there's a discount even though I know there are a lot of uh, only a few rooms left. There are only a few rooms left so every one of you will understand. So let's get a couple of slides ahead to stay in time. So I don't like quotes in general, but that quote I really like is from Caesar, Julius Caesar. He won't have said it in English, but if you want to take the island, burn the boats. So if you want to conquer an island, you must be ready to leave the boats behind, to burn the boats that, that brought you to the island. Otherwise, it would always give the opportunity to go three steps back and I can then look at it again and take a few steps ahead and step back. But I really have need to have the courage to step ahead and not have the option of going back. As an entrepreneur, I must have the courage to take this route. Another important example, a great example, how easy it is to be courageous sometimes, is this one. This is the little task that I'd like to give to you. Um, I'll give you a couple of minutes to solve this question. So the task is connect all numbers with four lines without lifting the pen. Think about it for a second. More than half of the people will never be able to solve the task, including me. Record is like 20 seconds. If you've got a solution already, we might be able to talk about a an employment contract. So let's think about it. You've got 10 seconds left. A show of hands, does anybody have a solution? You might know it, I know that. One, two, to the left side, are there any solutions or is it um, separated according to the intelligence? Well, there's one and two, one as well. This is a simple solution. It's not that difficult, is it? But what's happening up there with the three, where you have to leave the boxes? Hey, what are you doing? You can't leave the boxes. Who said that? That's rubbish. So if somebody tells you, we've ever done it, that we've always done it the way, you will know, do it differently. You will know, do it differently, please. That's a very good example. So let's take a look at the last two slides. I said that I've um, rearranged my basement, cleaned it up, and I found one thing that you might remember from the past. That is a wish list. A wish list. We wrote wish lists for our parents or for ourselves, and we wrote down a few things. And I would like to show mine. This is original. It's not drawn up right now. It's a wish list that I'd like to show now. So, dear mum, dear dad, Dear grandpa, dear grandma, dear uncle, dear aunt. So you should m mention as many people as possible. So this year I've got just one wish, a bicycle. You might think, well, he's crazy. Such a bicycle is expensive, but stop. If I remember that I'm only nine years old, I spend a lot of time on writing this. But you could give me this bike solution. Give me this bike for Christmas and birthday. I would also be happy to receive other presents too. But a bike would be the best because, well, my bike is rubbish. Some of you, that's important for merchandisers here. So some of you 
might come with ideas that, well, Felix isn't giving us, giving us anything too, so we won't give him a bike. But that's the ultimate argument, I'm a child, I don't earn any money. That's great, isn't it? That clearly shows if I want to be an entrepreneur and successful, I need to take people on boat, need to take them on and work with them. And with objections, I need to have new arguments, how to argument, and I need to have arguments that cannot be dealt with. And then I found something in my basement that's very interesting too. It's this thing. You might know it. It's a friendship book. Did you have one when you were younger? You, you didn't have friends or the ones who show, didn't show up? So, a friendship book. Um, I looked at um, one of the friends and asked her to send, um, ask people, um, to ask the children at a primary school what they wanted to become when they were older. They want to be kings, queens. They don't want to be models. They want to be top models. But that's not rubbish. That's not because they f want to find it funny. They're writing it down because they think it will be possible. My favorite example from boys is this one. I want to become a driver. That's, a me that's, that's impressive, isn't it? I want to do A-levels, then I want to study economics, and then I want to become a driver. That's a great example. And it shows us that we've never made any restrictions. Anything's possible when we're younger. So now, as an entrepreneur or as a private person, it would make sense to go back a couple of steps. So the last slide that I'd like to show here. It's a young man. That's me. For me, it was different. When I was born, one of my e eyes was white, not because I had uh, only one eye, but because I was cross-eyed, that uh, you couldn't see one of my eyes. My poor dad, I sometimes think how he looked at me and uh, he might have thought, oh, <laughs> cyclope, but well. It took three surgeries until my eyes um, allowed me to look straight ahead. And this is a picture where you can't see any cross-eyed effect, can you? But well, it took three surgeries for me to, um, to be able to look straight. So what does this have to do with courage? When I think back to this time, I always thought like, oh, Felix, you can't be successful as a freelancer. How would this work? You can't even look at the people. When I was 20 years old, I thought like, oh, now I have to flirt with women and can't even look at them straight in the eye. I can't flirt with my eyes. Well, the guy said you can look at two g women at the same time, but well, with women they don't like it. They need to, you rather need to focus on one person. So it took three surgeries for me to look straight. How could I ever step on a stage? Well, sometimes people might think you get a discount, but I always thought I might be inferior. But the really important thing is, I will never be able to change it, so one day I'll be in a box, in a wooden box, and I'll still be cross-eyed. But if I don't accept myself, accept that I have these properties where I'm inferior to others, and then work on them or think about what I can do with this, I won't be able to um, continue my life without thinking about the inferiority that will continue this along this way. So my suggestion, the end of my presentation, my suggestion to you is no matter whether it's entrepreneurial things, private things, there'll always be things where others are better than you. But it's not about the talents that we are born with. It's about what we make of them. Thank you very much.